Welcome, friends! Your favorite degenerates, Krista and Jason, are at it again! Let's celebrate the day! What's up, degenerates? What's the situation, Degenerate Nation? Okay, what are we doing today? We have extra people. Right? We're inside. First this off, is like introduction. Craziness. So we have okay. two very good, cool souls that we know from uh, Florida. Um, almost right after we got here, I got into home brewing, and home brewing led me to another crew of good people, just like cruise people. And two of the people we met were Kelly and Jason. And Jason has taught me most of what I know about brewing, so he's obviously not proud of me. But Aww. nonetheless, I continue to try. It's the tale of two Jasons. <laughs> Trust me, it's crazy. <laughs> Jason's beer is phenomenal. How many gold medal or medals have you won, Jason? Four gold. Four medals. And, and they're not easy to come by. Trust me. I have busted my ass and come out with one medal of all the brewing that I've done and entered. And most of it, I'm too embarrassed to enter. Kelly is a nurse. We have Another lots of nurses life saver, in our fan. Right? Yes. We have Nurse Nancy, nurse Rhonda. Nancy, Rhonda. Mm -hmm. Who else is a nurse? Anyway, if we're missing anybody, sorry, but thank you for being a nurse and taking care of me and my poo poo butt. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we, it's we, con we constantly um, tease a lot of the nurses that are going on our February cruise about you know how they're going to need to be giving us all IVs for the alcohol sure. poisoning. Yeah, have a nurse on staff. Yeah, right. right. We keep Monitor donating the there. IV fund mm -hmm. and the PDLA fund. And believe it or not, Kelly and Jason are also cruisers. They, what was your, your cruise was what now? It was Royal Caribbean. I don't remember the name of the ship, but it was our honeymoon cruise. So on their honeymoon, they went on a cruise. Yeah, went to Cosmo and Belize. Brandy, Yay! Out. You're gonna knock over the camera. Sorry, the dog's running around. Oh, by the way, we're doing this inside today because outside kind of sucks. It's a, uh, we go about five minutes without rain, and then we go back to rain for five summer. minutes. So rain, we're summer, summer for the, yeah, day. we're we're making do. So uh, we didn't want to go without being with our, our our crew of degenerate nation for a week. So we decided we just cut this one in the house. So don't ask about the decor that's less than six feet what? down on the wall. Tell me I about have nothing no, about. No, no, no. no. I am only responsible. I want to hear this as much as you. Inches. He's responsible for everything else. So there's a, there's a series of, of, of craft projects of Krista's up here where she's painted houses. Uh, right. And below that is where the cool starts. That's where his stuff starts. That's not a house, it's a deli. See? Yeah. That's the painted a deli. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah. Anyway, today... Um, we're, we're staying on our keto diet, so we're, we're trying to pick something that we can do on keto, and uh, maybe next week we can get back to uh, sugary drinks, but this week we're going to do, as you may have figured out by now by the bottle selection, which is far less ex extensive than our rum selection, because Crystal likes rum, so obviously the rum is stocked. Jason likes bourbon and, and whiskey, and here is the bourbon and whiskey selection in the Casa de Degenerate. But we just cleared out like three bottles of bourbon. Yeah, we did good. I am not keto. <laughs> No, you are we're, not, we're yeah. not keto. The, there you go. So we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna. Uh, I'm keto. We're gonna walk the line between two worlds today of being keto and not being keto, but being bourbon. And bourbon is one that makes the hair stand up on my arms. I've wanted to do bourbon for a really long time, and so today's our big chance to do bourbon. And so it's gonna be a maybe a little lengthy. So I apologize if you want to fast forward through the history of uh, distillation and bourbon. Be my guest and uh, get straight to the drink at the end. Uh, so let's get started. Now distillation started somewhere around 4,000 years ago in Mesopotamia, which is now Iraq and Syria, that area, and that's where distillation originated from. So basically we're on our 4,000th year of getting this right. Um, about 1,000 AD, distillation makes its way to Ireland. And Ireland being the Irish, they figured out what to do with it because in Ireland at the time, there were no grapes. So there wasn't any ability to make wine in Ireland. All they could do was distill grains. And then about, um, so, well, yeah, they, they figured out a little better way to distill in Ireland, obviously, because uh, Ireland people or Irish people, they, they know they're, they're perfectionists when it comes they're to... They're degenerates. Yeah, good. And we're, we're super glad that the Irish found distillation at this point because it makes the rest of the story possible. So is it whiskey, is it bourbon, is it whiskey with an E-Y, or is it whiskey with a, just a Y? And so the, the history behind whiskey with a Y and whiskey with an E-Y is whiskey with a Y is usually Scottish. Whiskey with an E-Y is going to be Irish or American. Now, 
it depended on the grain bill as we went later in time as things became more refined. So whiskey is with a Y is mostly barley, where whiskey with an EY is mostly corn. So now you know. Bet you didn't. You, you got out of bed this morning. You didn't figure you didn't learn anything, right? So popular types of this type of distil distilled product would include Scotch, made in Ireland, and, or Scotland, excuse me. And Scotch must be made in Scotland to be called Scotch. That makes sense. Did you, yeah, mm -hmm. but, but you can't make Scotch the exact like same grain bill. Or dough. Right. You can't make Scotch anywhere else and call it Scotch. It's got to be made in Scotland to do that. Um, okay. Scotch is also made from barley, but the grains are dried using a, uh, a bed of peat that has been lit. So lit peat like, like fire, oh. like, like smoking peat to dry out the grain. Just <laughs> lit like. And so it, it, the wheat or the peat, which is basically decaying vegetable peat, right? Mm -hmm. You're a gardener, so you would know peat. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, peat. So they light it up, and uh, that dries out the grain bill. But it also imparts this peaty flavor on Scotch that people that have more complicated palates than can me can appreciate. Irish whiskey, with an e y, is triple is distilled twice. So that's one of the characteristics of Irish whiskey. Uh, whiskey. With, a, with an EY is aged in new charred barrels. What happened to the lights? The air conditioning came I got out. a little weird, didn't it? Uh, whiskey is aged in new charred oak, white oak barrels. Two popular American whiskey types are bourbon or Tennessee whiskey, right? Everybody's heard yeah. of mm -hmm. bourbon and sure. Tennessee whiskey. Uh, bourbon, Jack. the grain bill has to, it, it, to be bourbon, I mean like the rules are solid, so I'm going to read it. Bourbon has to be at least 51% corn in the mash, has to be distilled at 160 proof or less, barreled at 125 proof or less, and it has to be aged in a new charred oak, white oak barrel, or charred oak barrel. Must be bottled no less than 80 proof, no added color or flavor, and bourbon can be made anywhere in the U.S., but usually comes from Kentucky. So you could have a bourbon from California that would be just as solid as a bourbon from Kentucky, but usually you're going to find bourbons from Kentucky. I believe bourbon's got to be in the barrel for at least four years as well. Right? There is some rules on uh, the barrel aging as well, and uh, it it go it it it's nonstop. It gets, with it gets stupid because you were reading it this morning and and confusing. The me. reasons why all that's true, and I'll, I'll give you a movie recommendation if you uh, if you want to watch a movie later as homework. But like it has to be 100, 160 proof or less, and so it doesn't start to impart too much booze on the flavor coming out of the barrel of the distillation process and all that stuff. So there's a lot of rules behind why bourbon tastes like bourbon. One of the things that, uh, that jumps out at me the most is you can't add anything to bourbon. No. Nothing. No adjuncts. Zero. You can't make a vanilla bourbon. You won't find it. It doesn't exist as a thing called bourbon. You might find a vanilla whiskey, or in the case of Jack Daniels, you'll find Tennessee Fire. But it's a whiskey. Mm. Ah. Ah. <laughs> Tennessee whiskey is basically everything that I just talked about and filtered through sugar, maple, charcoal. And it must be made in Tennessee. You can't make a bourbon or a Tennessee whiskey in Oregon. It just doesn't exist. There's no such well, thing. It doesn't make sense. All right. Well, the Tennessee whiskey that's, that's made the in Oregon. <clears throat> I don't know who's writing this stuff, but anyway. Who's writing the rules? It, the national. Directory of fuckery, for all I know. Okay. But at any rate, that I don't, I don't make them up. I'm just telling you what makes These a thing a thing. Right. <clears throat> now, other popular whiskeys that you'll find out there are rye whiskeys. The rye mm -hmm. is made with at least 51% of the grain bill being rye, and rye is closely related to barley. So now we're right back to a barley-based thing, which is basically a whiskey with a Y, but it's made in the U.S. You can't. You said that was a no-no. <laughs> figure out a way to jump the rules. And uh, Canadian whiskeys, you're going to find a lot of Canadian whiskeys out there. They're all, they're usually corn based uh, and can be rye as well and it would still apply to be a Canadian whiskey whether what the grain, whether the grain was rye or corn. It just doesn't matter as far as Canadian whiskey is concerned. Must be aged in a barrel no longer, no larger than 700 liters which is about 185 gallons. That's one of the Canadian things to be a Canadian whiskey for three years. The barrel can be new, old, charred, or uncharred. Uh, additives may be added and must be bottled at at least 80 proof to be a Canadian whiskey. And one of the things the Canadians do very, very well is blend whiskey. 
Crown. Crown Royal. Yeah. Crown Royal. All the Canadian whiskeys, it seems like, except for the really low dollar stuff, which I have some. Uh, Do you have your some. Crown out here? Yeah, it's out. Oh, that sorry. One. Canadian Club. This stuff's like 50 cents for a five gallon bucket. <laughs> <laughs> it's not horrible, but it's not phenomenal. <laughs> Other uh, popular, one other popular whiskey I'll mention the, uh, for, uh, for uh, posterity's sake would be Japanese whiskey, which seems to be kind of a latecomer to the game. What? The Japanese whiskey, a guy goes to Ireland, studies the Irish art of distillation of whiskey, and mm -hmm. comes back to Japan and starts making his own whiskey, and it is phenomenal whiskey. It's very hard to get in very limited quantities. And very expensive. It's usually high-end. It's, it's barley-based. Peated. Once again, we're back to the peating. Barrel age, no rules for the barrel. Um, the best uh, Japanese whiskeys are going to be in a, a uh, Mizunara oak barrels. And uh, if you can find that, it'll say it right on the label. Um, some sherry barrels, even American oak. So they could order American oak and have it sent over. Additives can be added. Vanilla, spice, malt, nuts, fruit, smoke, herbs, citrus, honey, whatever. It's all game when it comes to Japanese whiskey. And if you can afford it, try a uh, Minzura aged Japanese whiskey. It's called, uh, damn it, where's the name? I got the thingy right here. And I'll put a picture of it. There's a Kaeo cast strength, and it's 90 bucks for a 750. And then there's a Yamakaze Minzura cask age 2017 edition that goes for eight or $900. Roughly. Are they referring to those with scotches though? It says whiskey with a Y on this one. I took a, I went to a Scotch tasting one time and they had Japanese It makes scotch. sense. It makes Even sense it because that made. was the origination of the, the dude that was driving the whiskey revolution in Japan is studied with basically the Scotch folks. So right? did you try some expensive Japanese stuff? Yeah. It's, yeah. A, it's amazing, but I cannot afford it. <laughs> I, 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 I wouldn't recommend like this much. Of, of that would be how I would do it if I was going to do it. I wouldn't run out and buy a 750 mil at 90 bucks a bottle. If you look in front of you here, uh, there's not a bottle over 40 bucks. And that little bitty bottle. Yeah, this I think is our most expensive bourbon on the table, and that's uh, four roses. Oh, we have the little baby Wolford over there too. Wolford Reserve. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wolford is good stuff, or Woodford. Woodford. Woodford is delicious. Oh, little baby bottle. You said it was a great way to try whiskeys and bourbons that you wouldn't be able to try. Yeah, it was like 20, right. 25 bucks to, to do the whiskey tasting. And I asked her, you talk about the smokiness of the peat. At the very end, the guy gave us a bonus one. He called it Smoky Joe. And it was like licking a campfire. I can, yeah. It was the only one of the whole course I had to pour out. It was, it was, it was so overwhelming. Almost a uh, Rosh beer of whiskey. Right. This is a Rosh beer a Rosh whiskey. whiskey. Right. Rosh <laughs> whiskey. For those of you that aren't in the know with beer, uh, Rosh beer is smoked. Oh. Uh, yeah. Rosh I smoked. didn't know. No. How do you say it? Rosh. 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 It's Rosh. 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 Means okay, so that gives you some of the uh, brand or the styles of whiskey, what makes a whiskey or a whiskey with a EY or whiskey with a Y or a Scotch or a Tennessee whiskey and what defines why that is what it is. And so if we go back to the history, so what we, we left off at uh, 4,000 or 1,000 AD. Do they make a, a whiskey with an I? <laughs> no. Oh. Not unless somebody misspells it, but I'm sure Ward would catch that little paperclip dude and jump up and go, hey, fucker. <laughs> right. You need to say. <laughs> um, it comes to America around 1600 with the Irish immigrants. That makes sense. The English started a hefty tax called the English Malt Tax of 1725. And a lot of the distillers went underground producing moonshine in the dark. Mm -hmm. So the bootlegger is born once again because the government got involved. And now all of a sudden the shine movement is on. So it basically created a thing that still exists today, the bootlegger. Uh, it was good as money during the Revolu American Revolution. You could trade whiskey for virtually anything that you needed. Guns, ammo, storage for the night, uh, room and board, anything. Whiskey was as good as cigarettes are in prison. Sweet! So the Irish originally used barley as a base grain, left over from Ireland, and they encountered the Indians when they came to America. And the Indians had learned to farm corn from the Spanish. And so the next thing you know, corn is the base malt in whiskey. So yay diversity! Yay, right. what, what, how did you get... 
Oh, so it's we went from, popular We here. went from barley as the uh, original ingredient that the Irish would have chosen to use. As they right. moved to the United States, they encountered Indians who have learned to, car to farm corn from the Spanish. That's funny. So now the Irish are using a Indian Spanish crop to make whiskey. Irish whiskey, which now becomes American whiskey and bourbon. Do they still make barley whiskey somewhere? Yes, that's an Irish whiskey actually. But I thought you said corn was being made with for whiskey. American whiskey. But are they, aren't they using it in the Irish? The Irish whiskey is uh, Irish. once they come over to the U.S., that's what they have to work. So with a right? whiskey with a Y yeah. is going to be mostly barley. Oh yeah, 51%. sorry. Okay, and go back. whiskey with an e, e is going so that would right? be your yeah. It, it trust me, it gets even weirder. That's why he's got notes. <laughs> mm -hmm. that, that shares a history actually with uh, American light lagers. Yeah. Yeah. Tell Couldn't me. grow two bro in America when Germans came over and they were trying to reproduce the lagers of their country. Right. So all they had was six row. Six row had too much protein in it, so it wasn't a light body and it was cloudy. They started using corn to make their lagers. And then and they do a cereal you know, mash with the six row to get the enzymes out and to make that nice, clear, smooth. light body right. lager that they're used to at home. So that's how corn ended up in American light lagers. Facts you yeah. aren't gonna find anywhere else okay. but the degenerate channel. Right? <laughs> okay, so in about 1783, a guy named Evan Williams, I've heard that name before. Mm -hmm. It's a big bottle. <laughs> Evan Williams sets up the first commercial distillery uh, in Louisville, Kentucky, on the banks of the Ohio River. And bourbon is basically born at that point. Early, early bourbon. And I think water has everything to do with it. I mean, you got to think, mm. we're in uh, 1783. It's not like you turn the faucet on, there's no reverse osmosis. Yeah. you got to have a good water to make anything at this point. And where you're going to find it you're is right on one the of the best rivers that you mm. can find for bourbon. And then all of a sudden, uh, as time went on, obviously, that's become a really popular spot for uh, people to make or pull water from or over the course of time. Elijah Craig is the first to barrel age. You may know Elijah Craig. I'm sorry, I don't have any Elijah Craig on the table here because it's a little spendy for me. And uh, I guess I'll get out here, Do you? Nice. Yeah, okay. <laughs> We're going to Jason's house after this. <laughs> and the story of his, which I, I can't think isn't bullshit, but it's such a phenomenal story, I have to repeat it. So the story is he's making his, uh, his whiskey or his, his mash, and then he wants to store it. And the only thing he's got is a barrel that used to have pickled fish in it. And so he thinks, that's disgusting. I don't want my, my bourbon or my whiskey to taste like pickled fish. So he burns the inside of the barrel with fire. Um, and the charred barrel is the born. The charred barrel is born. And now what, what becomes bourbon today is it has to be in a charred first time use barrel. You can't reuse the barrel. So as craft, craft beer folks are used to bourbon barrel aged beers, that's why there's so many bourbon barrels available for purchases because they're only allowed to use them once. Right. Yep. They're just going to throw them away. Yeah. In 1791, whiskey, whiskey is taxed to pay for the Revolutionary War. There's a short rebellion in 1794 when a tax collector was attacked by about 600 uh, people. Uh, George Washington, president at the time, sends 13,000 troops. Now, this is, this is uh, 1791, 13,000 troops is a lot of troops. And he squashes the, uh, the revolt. And, in se and then Thomas Jefferson runs for office uh, shortly thereafter and says on the, uh, on the promise that he's going to repeal his taxes if elected. So guess who gets elected president? Thomas Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson gets elected president. And you think that booze isn't behind every single political move. It seems like there's some tie to beer or booze or wine or People something. People love their booze. Yep. Yeah, don't, don't mess around. So Thomas oh. Jefferson, I think, is elected basically, basically based on repealing the tax on spirits. In 1823, Dr. James Crow, you may know the brand Old Crow, mm -hmm. invents the sour mash. It, this process uh, gives us a chance to talk about some of the different types of labels. When I first picked up bourbon, I'm like, what does all of that mean? I, here's one that says bonded, and then another one says sour mash, and this one says small batch. And what does all of that even mean? And so I wanted to throw it out there real quick. So I'm not by any means being the, uh, the be-all, end-all of definitions of things you're going to see on a whiskey label or a bourbon label, but nonetheless, 
Sour mash means you take some of the old grains from the previous batch, put them into this batch, the new batch, and then it creates some consistency and it also makes your mash a little healthier to have some of the old stuff in it. And so now you've got a brewery or a distillery making spirits that are uh, a little more mm -hmm. the same one batch to the next without having to do a lot of blending. Barrel proof, another one I see on labels all the time. The, the bourbon is, or the bourbon of the whiskey is, is, must be within two points proof of the barrel's proof. So now you're starting to get more of that, that uh, whiskey that's the same as the barrel is, so you get to get a little closer to the distillery, right? Mm, I guess. That would, be, that would be what I would be like if I was into barrel proof stuff. I would be looking to be um, a little more connected with what the brewery is actually doing and not what the blended product is, but you get to be, that's the, the, the spirit that they're distilling. Mm -hmm. what are you me for? I'm just trying to get you closer. I'm right here. Okay. What do you want? I'm going to hump the table by getting you closer. Okay. <laughs> uh, single barrel. Each bottle comes from a single barrel. This one's pretty obvious, right? It's a great way to get to know the distil distillery's nuances. So from one barrel to the next, the, uh, the bourbon or the whiskey can change around a little bit. You'll find a little bit of uh, changes depending on where it's at and what warehouse it's stored in uh, to define how that bourbon tastes. So most of it is blended down to where it's a mix of all of it. There uh, is some different places in uh, warehousing that would contribute to be a better brand of uh, bourbon or whiskey. And one of the things we learned when we were at St. Augustine Distillery was that the pressure changes in Florida from the thunderstorm moving in and the thunderstorm moving out um, impacts how that barrel expands and contracts and soaks up the liquid that's inside and then spits it out and soaks it back up. Where in Kentucky, they have to rely on the seasons to do that. So in St. Augustine, they were claiming that their bourbon is fast aged because of the pressure changes in Florida. I don't know if that's exactly true because you got to figure. That's a lot of pressure. Kentucky's changes. been doing it for a long time. Okay. Right. Okay. Uh, bonded. So, like you see here on my old granddad, bonded, hundred proof. Bourbon is made for, at a single distillery by one single distiller in one distillation session. Aged for at least four years and is federally bonded in, in, in super in a supervised warehouse. Bottled at hundred proof in glass. Can I have a plastic bottle for a bonded whiskey? And the reason bonded came about, and I'll give you the recommendation for a movie later, uh, there was a lot of bad bourbon and whiskey going on in uh, the early days. And bonding was your way to guarantee that the quality was there. Is it wasn't mixed with bathtub gin or it wasn't awful because profiteers were starting to ruin the market. Okay. I've, I've been waiting for canned whiskey. <laughs> canned whiskey. Not bonded. <laughs> Okay, so prohibition hits. The shit hits the fan. Booze is illegal, only available by prescription. Now, prescription, there was uh, about 27 different reasons you could get a prescription. It wasn't probably hard, but a bottle of uh, booze back then would go for about what is the equivalent of $40 today. And I was on eBay years ago, and I bought two prescriptions. So here is what the prescription looks like. Maybe I'll take a picture of it here, but this is basically a prescription for booze during Prohibition. What was, does it give the reason? Um, one of them said something like teething. Um, you're, you're so booze to your baby. So right. give it to the baby. Nice. So medicinally, it would be <laughs> totally acceptable to put... Booze in your baby. Uh, spirits fermentus, it calls it. Oh yeah, baby Doris something. Yep, so baby Doris was having teething issues at 18 years old, and so <laughs> mom and dad went down and got themselves a prescription to ease her gum pain. I can't read it. <laughs> right? But yeah, doctors I, so I think mom was changed. probably, you know, hitting the bottle. Now when... Uh, not baby right? Doris. I'm definitely sure of that, right? <laughs> All the friends was over there with gum pain too. Right, yes. <laughs> but 27 different reasons. So um, it reminds me a lot of today, not to take a break from the whole prohibition uh, rant, but it reminds me a lot of today with marijuana. Mm. Right? Medical so where all of a sudden there's, okay, okay, it's not good for you whatsoever to, okay, okay, there's these few reasons we can use it medicinally, and all right, fuck it, just do it because you like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, depending on what Because state you're, you're an in. adult and you should know how to cope. Right. So well, that, depending yeah. on what state you're in, that is actually a true statement. So we yeah. people, us booze people, we feel you. 
Now, when it, the shit hit the fan in Prohibition and uh, the, the, what was the amendment? The bowl... Oh, shit, I don't remember. Yeah. Anyway, when it hit... So the 13th Amendment? No, it was... Uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, only six distillers are allowed to distill booze at this point. The rest of the distillers are out of business. Now, in beer, a lot of beer people figured out how to make a living. Anheuser-Busch went to making... Uh, uh, yeah, they switched to making some other product. Right, malted know, beverages, malted beverages and there was like great bricks for wine people, and there was ways to get around it. Like they would sell yeast next to uh, this canned beverage that if you put those two together, it would mm. equal beer and things like that. But um, it ended up with uh, the six distillers were pretty much running out of booze, so they ended up gobbling up the other distillers to try and keep up with it. So it's, it's kind of a, where uh, you could say that things go corporate. A little bit. Um, some of the distillers that actually made it are uh, American Medicinal Spirits, which would be Old Granddad. So made it right through Prohibition hmm. as a brand. Um, Brown Foreman, and that would be Jack Daniels. Old Forester, and some other brands that the the, the corporate brand owns at this point. Uh, Frankfurt Distilleries, believe it or not, that's Four Roses today. Schleini Industries, that's Buffalo Trace. Oh, you like him. Yep. And most brands we know and love, like Jim Beam, went out of business. So if you look up Jim Beam's business license or whatever it is, their thing, it starts in 1933. Okay. Even though on the label it says our recipe goes back to, right. you know, three days before Jesus was born. Yeah, it's it's just three years it's after Prohibition. Because they didn't yeah. make it. They didn't have the capability to make it. Especially the distillers where beer people could get into this malted beverage or whatever business or canning something else or, you know, trying to make do until... Uh, things passed, the distillers, they made booze. That's good though. Except during Prohibition. And here's the uh, the really fucked part about uh, Prohibition, is once Prohibition's over, the problem with boot, with uh, with bourbon and whiskey is it takes years to make, right? It's not something we're... Whiskey for sure, yeah. Right. So it's not something we just, uh, we, we throw a mash in, in the mash tun and then uh, out comes some bourbon. It has to age for like four years. At least, yeah. yeah so, vodka, you can turn over pretty quick. But. Right. Yeah, that, that's just like right out of the nozzle and we're making vodka or rum. In that case, rum is much less aged. But this is, you know, two to four years uh, from being light. So Prohibition ends and our first bit of bourbon isn't until four years later so they're importing bourbon or whiskey from wherever they could find it mostly canada probably right mm -hmm. that would be a natural thing. canada ireland so even the people Scotland. that were able to get their their crap together and get going again were a long way from being able to make put bourbon on the shelf that was any good I'm i sure wonder they, if they still had do. i wonder if they still had bourbon in barrels from before I don't know. They they, had all aged. the stuff I saw said it was destroyed. Yeah, they yeah. destroyed. Sure. It would be like finding oh. an illegal uh, uh, field of pot these days. We're just going to burn it. You know, we're not going to save your your purple Kush for later. <laughs> yeah, I've seen black your OG footage. is gone. Where they're like they got barrels on the streets just breaking open and they're going right. down the yeah. gutters. It's just awful. They just take an axe. Just dark, so dark times for the empire. Yeah. Uh, and then um, to, to fast forward, so we get over uh, Prohibition and things are happy and the world is a better place again and uh, people don't have their panties in as much of a wad and bourbon is flowing and people are happy. And then finally in 1964, Congress declares bourbon the country's official spirit. And they lay out the rules of why bourbon is bourbon, which goes right back to the first page of the history of what, what bourbon has to be. Okay, so bourbon the country is, set up the rules. Bourbon is the only American invented spirit, uh, distillery wise, distilled spirit. Oh. Now, That's why we like vodka from... Texas. We love Texas vodka. Tito's. We do, we do not you. like Texas. Oh, I do not that. like Texas vodka. It's dirty. Yes, you do. Oh, yeah. It's do. dirty. <laughs> I like, what's that? It's um, Russian vodka? You like vodka? Grey Goose. No, Grey Goose is Norway. Sweden. Norway or Finland. Yeah. yeah, I like that exotic and so getting back to uh, cruise ships and bourbon, um, you're going to find some really great bourbons on the ship if you are so uh, inclined to try bourbons on the ship. My favorite bourbons on the ship are going to be Buffalo Trace. I think it's super duper refined. It, it has a really uh, clean finish and it's just delicious. I love it. Uh, Gentleman Jack. And the difference between regular Jack and double and uh, gentleman Jack is double is gentleman Jack is double charcoal filter, so a little bit smoother if you like that that Jacky sort of flavor. 
Uh, Jack Daniels, regular Jack Daniels. Just love Jack Daniels. That that charcoal filter just it's perfect with Coke for me. And Woodford Reserve. You like that one? Which we we do have, but you can tell it's a little pricey for old Jace because he's got the little tiny bottle that Krista let him have. I suggested it is, you get it. To try. I, I think I think uh, Woodford Reserve is one of the the most well refined, and for the price point, I think it's really really decent, just like Buffalo Trace. So, uh, we're okay, not... Full disclosure, I told him he could have a bottle, a big bottle, not just a baby bottle. And he says it's just too expensive. Well, look, here's, a, here's a bourbon that goes for about 18 to 25 bucks for around 1.75 mil. You can tell I don't have an issue with this because I've damn near drank the whole freaking bottle. That's and then Krista, Krista gave me for Christmas this Devil's Cut, and you see that I've put a pretty good dent in that. And so it's not a matter of uh, how expensive it is, it's my perceived value of being able to drink it and not pay too much for it. Because I'm not having a problem getting through any of these. The only one on this table I'm having a problem getting through is this fucking horse piss right here. What's that? <laughs> Grant's Blended Scotch Whiskey Cask Edition. It's it's finished in an ale barrel, like a, and it t does. I, I sense oh, so a... Gary, uh, it should be good. I sense a, uh, a British ale finish on it, but I don't know if it's because it's scotchy that I don't like mm -hmm. it, and my, my palate's not refined enough yet to be able to process that, or what, but... It's fucking swell. So you don't... Where, where'd you get this bottle? We bought it. Why did we buy it then? Because it said... Cask edition. It said cask edition with bourbon. Oh, and, and we were having so much Hold fun on. with it. Oh. Jason? It's not bad. Okay, so it's... Yeah, but you're right. It tastes more like a scotch. It's scotchy. It's yeah. probably my so issue. So if you don't enjoy a scotch, you wouldn't enjoy this. Yeah. So there you go. Thank you for clearing that up. That it's not a bad. Uh, to be fair, it does says blood of scotch. Yes, it does. To be fair, I, I, I have yet to. Uh, and yeah, I like, like a scotch. Klaikowski is this big scotch guy. Loves scotch, and he's just uh, there. You're, as you progress through your scotch. journey of, uh, of of spirits, or even booze, or uh, beer for that matter, as as we we have walked the Everyone's path of beer, yeah. and then finally you get to the point where you can appreciate a goes, mm -hmm. or uh, name another strange brand, maybe a Rosh beer. I will never appreciate rush for Sours. Sours. <laughs> Sours. Sours takes a lot of appreciation. Glitter beer. <laughs> uh, but their taste is very subjective. So what I may like, he may not like. What she likes, he may not like. Hell, a lot of we, people don't like IPAs. Yeah, like there could right. be four mm -hmm. of us. It took me the first IPA I tried was awful. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I, I think there's an evolution to your palate as you work your way through bourbon. And... Uh, Bourbon, there's no good entry level to bourbon, in my opinion. It's it, the first hit of bourbon is always, holy shit. Yes, that's And we the... always, it seems to turn out to be a shooter. So almost on a dare in a bar with your friends, we're going to do mm. six shots of Jack, right? Yeah. And so we learn to hate it. Until I like we, Jack. Until we grow up, and then we learn the nuances of what's happening in that bottle. Well, and then we learn how to drink Jack. When we're young, we don't learn how to drink Jack except to get drunk and fall down and wake up again and try it again. All right, so what I laid out before you is the, the Casa de Degenerate bourbon whiskey and apparently scotch selection. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and we have, uh, as we're keeping on the card, the counting carb keto thing this week, mostly all of this is completely drinkable. None of this is off the table until I get down here to the naughty section, mm, which is my fucking favorite. Look at how much of this, I've cleaned the shit out of this bottle, and this is a, I've had this bottle for two months? Yeah, I don't Two months, and I put this big of a dent in it. Crown Apple is one of my favorite, and it is phenomenal. It tastes like somebody dropped a, uh, one of those Jolly Rancher oh. <laughs> apple into the bottom of a well-blended Canadian whiskey, and it's really, really good. Unfortunately... It's not carb Five free. carbs per, per ounce. <laughs> yeah, so, okay, so now, now to be fair, three sip rule, not as good as the first sip. Alright, so, so it's still crap. So when your palate's adjusting to it. It had hope for a moment. I still had a little bit of beer in this glass. Didn't so make it. Uh, <laughs> now I've had a few sips. Not, okay. not, not that great. And there's one that you actually like that's not on this table right now. There's many I like um, that are not on this table. Well, I know you like Maker's Mark. Love Maker's Mark. And I know you like, uh, but Jason, Maker's Mark doesn't like Jason. I turn into a demon. What? <laughs> and Maker's well, Mark no, doesn't he like likes Jason. Maker's Mark too much, yeah. and then it oh. becomes a problem. Oh. 
And then when did Mankers Mark treat me bad? It didn't. No, I was no. talking about that Jason, not oh, this Jason. Too many Jasons. Too many Jasons. Um, and then um, do you have four roses on here? I do. Oh, okay. Up, there, up front there. But your Buffalo Trace Wait, is in Buffalo here. Trace in Florida, and I don't know about where you live, but Buffalo Trace is really hard to find in Florida. I mm -hmm. cannot, I mean, it's hit and miss, and you almost have to have a friend that works at a liquor store to get a hold of any of this stuff. So it's tough sledding in Florida to find Buffalo Trace. I have found a relatively close uh, knockoff. You see even the bottle is similar to it, and it's called Bluff Springs. It's an ape or a uh, total wine knockoff. It seems a little more rye-based to me. There's a... It's not close, but I dig the extra spiciness nonetheless. But if I could have Buffalo Trace on the table at all times, I would certainly do that. Okay, so. Okay. We've had all this history. What do you want to start with? Um, we don't like old fashions. I apologize. So I'm going to leave an old fashioned to somebody else that can appreciate it. Go look, YouTube search a uh, old fashioned. Uh, it's just not our, 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 our gig. So we're going to do. Uh, Bourbon or or whiskey and cokes, and then we're gonna try for a mint julep. Mint julep, because that's that is some straight up Kentucky shit right there. Yes, actually, it is because it was I need hats. Uh, the drink. Yes, it was the drink you found in the Kentucky Derby. <laughs> I need a feather uh, bow. So, um, let's start out with. What do you want to start out with, love? Let's do the. the you the, want to do the, the hard one or the easy let's one? Let's do the hard one first. Or no, let's do the diet coke or coke and. All right, whiskey so and coke. Whiskey and coke. first drink we're going to do is a uh, bourbon or whiskey and coke. Chris has found one whiskey that she likes of all of the whiskeys on this table. And can you guess which one it might be? Krista, pull your bottle. Chimo. Can you believe that she likes Irish whiskey, the, the Caskmates Jameson stout barrel aged? So not only does she not like stouts, and not does she not like whiskey, she ends up liking a stout barrel aged whiskey from Ireland. Yes. She does love Irish people though. I do like Irish people. And the red in my hair. You have any Irish in you? Yeah. Do you have any German in you? I don't think so. Would you like some? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh! <laughs> All right, yeah, so I saw, yeah I let's make up some, uh, <laughs> some, some whiskey or, uh, or, or bourbon and cokes. Okay. Everybody pick their favorite bottle. Can I skip the Coke part? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> okay, we got our drinks mixed. Everybody has selected theirs. You can see from the uh, the line, this basically represents the people. I have chosen Woodford Reserve. Krista has obviously chosen the Caskmates with uh, Stout uh, Jameson. Kelly has chosen Crown Apple. Good pick. And Jason has chosen to go with the Four Roses on a cube of ice because he is much more sophisticated. Pinky out. Pinky out. Pink, pinkies up. <laughs> Cheers. 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 Clink, clink, clink. Mm. Nice. So good. All right, well, you know the drill. Um, we'll drink these. We'll wait 20 minutes. We'll come back. We'll do the breathalyzer and uh, see where we're at. I'll be sauced. <laughs> I didn't know we were doing a breathalyzer. Okay. Okay. Bye, guys. Good times. Welcome back. Uh, that was our drink. Yay! Everybody loved it. I chose Woofford Reserve. Krista chose the Jameson Caskmates Stout Barrel mm -hmm. Aged. Kelly chose Crown, Crown Apple. Apple. And Jason chose Four Roses with a Cube of Ice. Very distinguished. Mm -hmm. Back on the, the any of that? I mean, not that any, all of us didn't know we liked that one. Jameson before. Caskmates, uh, for me, um, I don't like the dirtiness of a lot of the whiskeys. Or the bourbons and, and all that stuff. I just it just it, it bites me a little too hard. So the cask mates because it's it's got an extra thing um, like the stout or the IPA or there was another one I like too. Um, I think cask mates has three. Um, I, I I like the little extra. It kind of tones down the the bite that Jack Daniels has. So I think Krista not being a bourbon or whiskey person, uh, something to take away some of the bourbonness and yeah. fits her. Mm -hmm. yeah. Crown apple? Same for me. I'm not a whiskey fan, so the so, apple in it helped. Right, and she's not counting carbs, so she's not sweat. and I'm on number two. Jason, mm -hmm. four roses. Delicious. Delicious. Okay, I would have your Woodford, but I didn't want to take your little bottle. So I had to go for the four <laughs> roses. He's other a big whiskey fan, want. so that's why he went just straight. Straight whiskey. He just, he just, yeah, you just nutted up and did it. I don't, I, I can't. That's mm -hmm. the way I like it. 
Let's blow. Hey, uh, fun fact. Uh, you know the word proof, so alcohols are 80 proof, 40% alcohol, but where did the word... Point oh five. Good job. You can drive. I can still drive. Okay, your turn. I'll get back to my proof story in a second then. Once Krista quit beeping at me. Oh. Okay, so the next drink we're gonna do, I hope my outfit does it justice. I wanted to correct myself from earlier. Eighteenth oh. Amendment was prohibition, not thirteenth. Eighteenth. Eighteenth Amendment. So I hope my outfit is, is doing this justice, but our next drink is gonna have bourbon in it, but it's gonna be a mixed drink. Um, we've got the Donnelly. Thank you very much. Um, we've got keto friendly. Oh. Point one oh. You can. Oh. Okay. So, in all fairness, Jason did some pregame. Yeah, yeah. Jason home brews, obviously, you know that by now. Uh, phenomenal beers. And uh, so he brought some of his beers over, and I cannot stay away from Jason's beer. So, I may have drank some of his and then tried to repay him with like some of the beers I had bought when I was out west. Oh, been like Ninkazi. Yeah. Okay. Um, so this is keto friendly simple syrup. Um, I made it. Um, I went out and found a YouTube video and some bloggers who are keto friendly. It is one cup distilled water, half a cup of pure erythritol, and a quarter of a quarter of a teaspoon of xanthan gum. Um, you heat it up and then um, you, you heat the erythritol and the water together and then you add the xanthan gum at the end. Um, and so it makes simple syrup that's keto friendly. So Sugar free simple syrup. Sir, sugar free simple syrup and simple syrup is basically water and sugar. Um, so this is a sugar substitute. So there's an option out there for us keto people. Yes. Anyway, back to the proof story. So the uh, the Navy, the British Navy sailors would uh, take the the spirits that they were given and pour uh, some gunpowder out, put it on a table, and then pour the liquid, the liquor, on top of it. And if it lit on fire when they tried to strike a match to it, one nine. And I think you're a little. Uh, you may have had a fresh drink on your hands. Yeah. Anyway, if it lit on fire, it was proven to be legit alcohol. If it didn't light on fire, it was bunk. And so they knew they were getting proof liquor if they would light on fire. The gunpowder would light on fire with the booze poured on top of it. That's where the word proof comes from. Okay, so back so to my... So has got her super cool uh, boa on. We are doing the mint julep. A Kentucky favorite. If and you... it was originally only made at the Kentucky Derby. So, to pay some homage to the Bourbon County, to Kentucky, for bourbon, for, uh, oh, that smells so good. <laughs> he gets we're, so distracted. We're going to do it. mint juleps with Evan Williams, America's first distillery. Now, I can only make two drinks at a time. How much Evan Williams do you need? Um, ounce of each? It's an, uh, so I'll need two ounces of Evan Williams. Um, not yet. Oh, I did this backwards. I need simple syrup first. How much? I need an ounce and a half of simple syrup. Well, why can't you put all this Okay, in? go ahead and put it in there. Okay. Now I'm going to muddle and pray that I don't make a huge mess. What muddling does, um, and I thought this was really silly at first, um, but I'm releasing the mint oil into the drink by smashing these leaves up. That's and what's it smells going great. On. Yeah. Release the oil. So it, it makes a big difference when you actually pound the shit out of it. Um, and I know this looks completely That's inappropriate, That's right? That's a scientific term, pound the yeah. shit out of it. Um, but I'm actually actually doing something. It's um, it's more effective than just releasing it. Um, Release the oil. Now I need some crushed ice. That would be in this bowl. Yes. I gotta make another one, so that's good. Okay. Do we need ice, ice in our uh, glasses? Yeah. 
Okay? Let me go ice up our glass. And once again, this is getting frosty as I'll get out because um, I'm shaking it with ice. So it's, it's cooling the mint, it's releasing the mint oils, it's mixing up the mint oils with the simple syrup with um and it's also diluting so as the ice melts it's diluting it further jason's still getting me ice cubes um i will be straining it into the glasses um this is more of an on the rocks drink refresher so it's not going to fill the glasses the way um most of our drinks have i would like to share my story of aroma so i was uh, in here enjoying this uh mint and then I go in the backyard and the dog just laid a freshie. <laughs> <laughs> so, I like it. Seriously? <laughs> okay, I'm going to get rid of this while you... <laughs> the dog laid a freshie. Yeah. What kinds of aromas? Yeah. It's kind of from high to low. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about fresh mint and you're talking about shit. It's all fresh though, right? It is all fresh. Now, do you want to garnish your drink? Here, we'll garnish you. Thanks. Okay. That one's garnished. Now I got another batch to make. How come you can't throw it in the stem? What's the deal? Because the stem's nasty. We don't do stems in our drinks. You know, like chopped broccoli, all you really want is a four inch. Or wheat. Yeah. Or we, right? Hmm, I guess I have to. Can I pour this into another cup? We'll work it out. Again, I'm being inappropriate with the mint leaf and the bubbler. And you can even get some wrist action in it. So long hanging fruit. I'm not having nothing to do with this. <laughs> okay, do you want to pour me a couple ounces of Evan Williams? <laughs> went a little okay. heavy. And right on Jason's the went a little heavy. Right on the money. The crushed <laughs> ice, please. The crushed ice. And do you want to restock their um, cups with whole cubed ice? Whole cubes. None of these stale cubes. No, that's, we don't deal with cubes like that. We got a classy operation here, okay? Oh, dripped all over my stuff. really getting cold. garnish. We've got um, all the ingredients mixed together. Let's have a mint julep. Cheers. Mint julep. Cheers. That's actually not bad. Mm. It's better bad. than an old fashioned. For a definitely. whiskey, yeah, Very it's minty. not bad. Oh, yeah. man, this is dangerous. Mm -hmm. For a whiskey, I mean, because I don't like whiskey, so for a whiskey, this isn't bad. I can drink this. Same. Yeah, and I guess that Evan dangerous. Williams isn't the best bourbon in the world, but man, it's phenomenal in a mint julep, right? Yeah, sugary, minty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's one ounce of bourbon, three quarters of an ounce of simple syrup or keto-friendly simple syrup, whichever you choose. Four mint leaves per drink. 
um, and a crush and crushed ice. Shake and there, there's no other liquid. If you wanted to dilute it further, you could probably add club soda. Um, you could probably add just regular water. Um, if you have a soda stream at home, you can carbonate your own water um, and, and just top it off if you feel like it. But this is a traditional mint julep as served at the Kentucky Derby. Cheers. Cheers. All right, you know the drill. 20 minutes, we'll be back. I'm going to be shit-faced by then. <laughs> Okay. See ya. Bye. Welcome back. Hi. I'm back. And, and <laughs> Mint julep is very good. Do you want one? Sure. Sneaky. Which one? Um, rich. Okay. Mint julep's very sneaky. So let's do, uh, let's get on with the, uh, the business. Yes. He's getting on with business. Again, I'm having low carb potato chips. Um, they're Quest tortilla style protein chips. Um, the only potato chips I like that are low carb are by Quest, and they make tons of flavors. She's got Rams, mm. so I've got. 0.09. Oh. I'm actually going Four down. grams. Huh? Four grams. Mm -hmm. Whose superpower five, five is carbs boobs? Ooh. So your superpower is bourbon? Yeah, wasn't I like. You thought you were at 1.0. Yeah, no, I'm 0.09. Thank you very much. And and yeah, it's, this uh, nacho cheese has a four carb, four net carbs. Uh. Hey, you want another fun fact? Kentucky has more bourbon barrels aging than they do people. Point <laughs> <laughs> oh six. All right, you're the that's DD. Pretty, that's pretty respectable. My superpower is bourbon. What's not to like about this stuff at this point? And the carbs in Crown Apple that's my favy. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna hang around. We're gonna come up with a Crown Apple hack. Wait till it gets to zero. So the mint julep is absolutely delish. Yeah, if you. I mean, if you're not a bourbon person, it really buries the bourbon well. So I can see why mm -hmm. it's so popular. Right? Totally delish. Yeah. Good drink. Good drink. Um, and what I did was I actually... <laughs> you don't have that. Should have enough hair to get like, uh -oh, yeah. what you Uh-oh, yeah. Point you one, two. Okay. She oops. Yeah. Eh, yeah, uh, you know. Um, I actually filled my cup with water. And so I have the mint still in there, so I'm drinking water, but it's got mint in it. And Krista's uh, mint hack, if you're on keto, one of the uh, side effects of keto is? Bad breath. Bad breath. So one of the uh, hacks for uh, improving your breath is mint water. Mm-hmm. You can put a sprig of fresh mint a in sprig. your... A sprig. It's only, just, uh, you can't use the word sprig. sprig in many sentences, but this is one. Yeah, you can put just a sprigly uh, leaf. A sprig of um, <laughs> mint in a bottle of water, shake Pretty it up. Cool. You can even rip the... 0.17. I think you might still have some booze on your breath. I don't yeah, think that's what And he's been doing nothing but Rick and water, though. Yeah. All right, so uh, Jason, we're going we're gonna to say that you're at a 0. 0.08. <laughs> okay, so for extra... Cre I'm just going to pour some beers. Uh, Jason was kind enough to bring us some Broken Strings Mr. Wendell, which is a bourbon cognac barrel aged imperial stout with hazelnuts and vanilla beans. Comes in at 11%. Go see my buddy Charles. Get oh, baby. Look at that. Mortar oil. You see that? I ain't touching it. Oh my god. That looks so good. I'm too bad my, my friend Matt's not here because he would dig the shit out of a beer that was this dark. This this, this is, oh, I'm glad we already blew because... Here you go, sir. Thank you. We're going to have to Uber to dinner. Uh, we might just barbecue. Okay. Okay, so the challenge for Krista is because one of our favorite whiskeys is crown apple because it's so delicious right is to make regular crown into crown apple which has five carbs per ounce with her flavorings so krista thinks thinks that she's up to the challenge so here it, we're going to pour a uh, a, a uh, control shot 
And then we're going to add crown to the other shot and see if Krista can make everybody happy with a crown apple with no carbs. I can't guarantee that I will completely hack it, but I can come pretty close. Okay, I'm gonna come over and do my magic. Come over on this side so everybody can see you with your knife. Here's my brother. Thank you guys for stopping by, by the Thank way. Yeah. Um, we love uh, we love us a little Jason Kelly time for definite. Yeah, so I'm having oh, so much fun. Good. I was a little I was a little bit really of a funk, but you man. guys have put it's me good, in great right? mood. Wow. <laughs> okay, if you get to Central Florida, go to Broken Springs and try and find this beer. Broken Springs, yeah. Mm. And Broken Strings is down by the, uh, uh, what's by the soccer stadium. The soccer stadium. Yeah, right. um, Westmoreland and Church Street. Sure, we can repeat repeat this for yep. those of the the folks out in our yep. friends. Okay, now everybody can have. That's it. It's going to be a little less sweet. Right. Jason is far more of a bourbon and third or whiskey enthusiast than I am. So, uh, if you wish, sir, it here's your control, control shot. It is less sweet because he wasn't a real fan of the original mm. sweet. So he'll probably like it more. I don't know how well it goes with the stout. Yeah, that's that's very sweet. That's not that's not something I normally drink. Yeah, I care. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, pretty close. Not not as sweet, which it, for me is better. That's what I told you. Um, I mean, it didn't make it as sweet. sweet. But yeah. yeah, it's like um. Yeah, it's got the same weird, not weird, but that, that Jolly Rancher kind of flavor, mm -hmm. but without all the sweetness of Michelle. Yeah, would you like to uh, sure. control shot? This is okay. regular Crown Apple. Okay. You gotta do the. Feels like delayed reaction. <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty close. It's um, still tastes the apple, but it's just not as sweet. Not as sweet. <clears throat> I don't. I can't add anything more to that. But yeah, I don't know how else to describe it. But yeah, um, the regular Crown Apple feels um, heavier. Yeah. Um, like it, like yeah, it's like more mouth, of a the mouth feels the thicker. mouth feels thicker. Yeah. Um, and the uh, and the original Crown flavored feels lighter mm -hmm. and it's obviously not as sweet because yeah. I didn't make it as sweet. I mean, I could make it sweeter, but... But I feel like what you made is, yeah, easier to drink mm -hmm. than the Crown Apple. But it's not like, you know, some synthetic sweetened things where wow. you're like, you know, you can tell it's synthetic. It's, I think I it's actually smooth. prefer yours over mm -hmm. uh, the Crown. I yeah. love the Crown, don't get me wrong, and I'll keep buying it by the uh, gallon bottle if I could. But right. um, the Crown Apple is definitely stickier. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's, uh, uh, we've had this bottle of Crown for some time because it's not Crown Apple. <laughs> 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 and uh, yeah. Yeah, we could polish off crown with your additive. So, uh, can you uh, give us the recipe so I can post that? So it was um, basically one ounce of crown and seven drops of Campella's green apple hard candy flavoring and two drops of Capella's super sweet. Um, that's it. Okay, so there you go. If uh, you want to figure out where to get that, if you can't by yourself, uh, leave a message and we'll uh, we'll get to it. Mm -hmm. 
we'll help you out. But if you're on keto and you love Crown Apple, we got a hack for you. Yep. All right, let's wrap it up. Huh? I like hacks. I'm having fun with the hacks, actually. Um, I'm, I'm just having fun. Man, this stuff is dark. Uh, it, is, it looks Delicious. like motor oil. <laughs> it's awesome. Okay. Yeah, let me. <laughs> just before we sign out, I'm gonna. I'm, I'm gonna, gonna steal, steal water. I'm steal Chris's phone. <laughs> Nothing. It's like a black hole. <laughs> Light cannot <and I'll> escape. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. Who, who else could turn a bourbon video into a dark beer video? <laughs> yeah, you too. You invited me over. <laughs> Okay, you guys have a great week. Um, we'll see what kind of trouble we can get into. Yep. Thank you for coming by, guys. Yeah, thanks, thanks for, for having us. Thank very much. Celebrate the day. Celebrate Cheers. the day. Cheers. Thanks for watching. Much love to our friends. Be the good in the world. Spread the love and go on an adventure. Please like, comment, and subscribe.